This recipe kind of caught me off guard. It was one of those where I thought, it sounds good, but it also sounds kind of odd. I'm telling you guys, I think this is gonna be delicious. My mixing bowl here, I have one pound of ground beef. You can use ground chicken, ground pork, whatever it is that you would like to use. I'm gonna add in one fourth cup of breadcrumbs. I've got some crushed pineapple here and I'm gonna reserve the juice. So we're gonna drain the juice into a bowl because we are gonna use this. All right, to our meatballs, we're gonna add one fourth cup of crushed pineapple. I need about three tablespoons of milk and I'm not measuring this one, it's just a, an estimation. We need about two tablespoons of reduced sodium soy sauce. In our case, we're gonna be using coconut aminos. I'm gonna slice up a little bit of green onion. We need about two tablespoons to go in this. Now, that's a little less than two tablespoons, but I told you guys we are easing into green onions with my husband, so probably about one tablespoon here. We need about two garlic cloves. You can absolutely use fresh garlic, but I'm gonna go ahead and just use the minced garlic from the jar. The recipe also, also calls for fresh ginger, but you guys know I always have this in our refrigerator, so we're gonna use that. And I'm gonna do about a teaspoon. You guys know we really like ginger though, so maybe, maybe closer to a tablespoon. All right, this is one of the things that I love my KitchenAid mixer for. I'm gonna attach this and mix up these meatballs. All right, those meatballs are mixed up. I am using my scoop here. It's a one and a half tablespoon scoop, and this just makes it really easy. You can roll them into meatballs, and I kinda do. It helps to make them roughly the same size. And then I'm just setting them on this parchment lined baking sheet. I do have my oven preheating to 500 degrees right now. These are ready to go in the oven and I am going to cook these for about 15 minutes or so. All right, while that's in the oven, let's get our sauce mixed together. We need a half cup of coconut aminos or soy sauce, whichever one you would like to use. About a third cup of water. We're gonna add in one fourth cup of brown sugar. Take one fourth cup of that reserved pineapple juice and add that as well. This also is gonna get some garlic cloves. So about two garlic cloves. We need about a half teaspoon of fresh ginger or this squeezed ginger, you guys know. Always use a little more than what it says. We're going to cook this over on the stovetop and get that sugar dissolved, and then we're gonna thicken it up with a little bit of cornstarch or arrowroot or flour. You can thicken it up with whatever your preference is on that. I've got a tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with a tablespoon of water here, and we're going to pour that in and get it combined. All right, the meatballs just came out, so we're going to add them into the sauce and toss them so that they get this great uh, flavor all over them. Here we have those pineapple meatballs. Uh, spoiler alert, I already tried one and it is absolutely delicious. Do not skip these pineapple meatballs. So easy to make and so, so good. All right, let me just show you. You've got one, two, three ingredients. This is gonna come together so fast. The first thing that we need to do to get this recipe started is shred up this Parmesan cheese. Now, if you wanna make this even easier, go ahead and buy pre-shredded or even that like in a can, grated cheese. You know what I'm talking about? I don't remember what it's called, but it's already grated cheese and you just, it's the shaker cheese. That's what we always called it growing up, the, shra the shaker cheese. But I went ahead and just bought this. We're gonna shred this up in my little cheese grater. Now for this recipe, we're gonna use about a half cup of this cheese. Now I, this is, this is weird guys, but I'm double shredding it to make it more similar consistency to the shaker cheese. You do not have to do this. This is just is just the way I'm choosing to. Now we have a packet of this Italian dressing mix. I am only gonna use about half, about half of this. I'm gonna pour it into this bowl and we will mix it all together. Now, if I were making more, I would probably use more of the dressing mix, but I cut two decent sized chicken breasts in half this way so they're thinner. So I don't feel like we need more than this. I'm just gonna do a quick mix. 
of these two ingredients. Now I'm gonna make this in the air fryer. I will have oven instructions listed below in the description box in case you're curious, in case you'd rather do it in there, or maybe you don't have an air fryer, that's totally fine. All right, so we've got the air fry basket. I'm gonna spray it. Okay, now we're gonna take our chicken and just dip both sides and then lay that in the basket. Pretty much any time I put something in the air fryer, I do like to spray the top of it with some olive oil spray. And we may flip these halfway through. So we're gonna set up our air fryer now. I'm gonna preheat the air fryer to 390 degrees so that it's ready to go when we are ready to start. And then the chicken will end up baking for about 15 minutes and we'll flip it halfway. Let's add a little bit more Parmesan cheese to the top because, you know, we like our cheese here. And then just for color, you do not have to do this. I chopped up some green onion. We're gonna add that. Before we sit down for dinner, I'm gonna try just a little piece of this chicken to let you guys know how it is. For having two ingredients, this is delicious. Whatever's on your meal plan for this week, Take something off and add this because this was so easy to make and so good. I love the savory. You can taste the Parmesan. Very, very good. Oh yeah. I've just preheated the oven to 400 degrees and we are gonna get started. I'm telling you, the flavors of this are right up our alley and there's not that many ingredients. I feel like this is gonna be pretty simple. I am going to put some of this in a saucepan. We're gonna heat it up over on the stove. We're gonna make that sauce first before we do anything else. The recipe actually calls for Frank's hot sauce, and if you guys are familiar with that, absolutely feel like you can use Frank's. We are going to use our Truff hot sauce. We love this hot sauce, plus we already have it available, so we figured we'll go ahead and use this one. We are starting with one half cup of this, and I might need to go pull out one of the other ones too. I don't know, this is probably enough. We could also, we could add Cholula to it too if we needed. Use whatever hot sauce you love. That's what I would say. Should I add Cholula to it? Yes. It's a little under half cup, but I think it's fine for us. All right, go ahead and put that in the saucepan. And we need, nope, right here. What? So, are you saying this pot is a saucepan? Yeah. And that's traditionally what a saucepan is. Uh -huh. It's not something like this, That's a, frying a pan. pan. That's a frying pan. So it's called a sauce pan. Are you, are you sure? Like if you're boiling noodles, then you boil it in a pot, but I'm pretty sure this is called a sauce pan. <laughs> is it called a sauce pan? I feel like it is. Excuse me. We will find out. Somebody's gonna tell us what it's yep. called. All right, so we're starting with that half cup of, um, Hot sauce. This is three fourths of a cup to the hot sauce. We need two teaspoons of garlic powder. All right, we're gonna add one tablespoon of coconut aminos. And oh, if you don't have coconut aminos, that's totally fine. Just do soy sauce. And we need to add three teaspoons of rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, that's also okay. You can add apple cider vinegar in place of that. You said three? Three. What is this? It's what called are we making? firecracker chicken, and we're using thighs. Yep. Let's stir this together a little bit. Okay, so this is just gonna go over on the stove. We're gonna heat it on medium heat just until that brown sugar dissolves. I'm gonna cut open our chicken thighs, and that was the suggestion is to use chicken thighs. So we're liberally salting. Liberally? Li li liberally. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, salting the Adding salt and pepper, I cannot talk, to the chicken, both sides. You can use cornstarch. We're using tapioca flour. That's just what I use in place of cornstarch, but we need to add one cup to this so we can dredge the chicken and the flour. It is ready for the dredging. It says to make a big mess. It says to liberally coat both sides in this, so that's what I'm doing. And then we're gonna take it over the stove 
I've already got some oil heating on the stove top, just a little bit of olive oil, and we are going to fry these up about three to five minutes each side. Okay, over here stove side, we've got this hot sauce, uh, brown sugar mixture deal, and it's just kind of working together. So I'm gonna turn this off because it does feel like the brown sugar is completely dissolved. Well, I just realized I was not recording that entire time. All that I said here though, is you just want to move your uh, chicken from the dredge over into the frying pan. You're just gonna cook it three to five minutes or so each side to get good color on it. And you want this to be made, I should have said this earlier, but you want this to be made in an oven safe pan because this is gonna transfer to the oven. All right, so I think we are getting some color. Oh yeah, Let's start to flip these. You can add as much or as little color to these as you want. They are gonna cook a little bit longer in the oven though. All right, so next step is we are going to take this sauce and pour it all over the top of the chicken. Nice looking at that. Oh yeah. Okay, this is gonna go into the oven just like this for about eight, well, five to eight minutes, just depending on the size of your chicken thighs. And remember that oven is preheated at 400 degrees. Okay, we are also gonna take a couple of sprigs or just probably one green onion and I'm gonna cut this for the top and it's just really gonna add color to the top of our chicken. We're gonna taste this before we sit down for dinner and let you guys know how it is. So what is sure this supposed to be? First of all, yeah, it looks done. American, Asian fare. Oh, I was gonna add ginger and change up the recipe a little bit. It looks Asian. It does look Asian. I'm not sure, honestly. It's gonna be super hot. Like spicy? No, like, like temperature hot. It is very similar to like a general sauce. Don't you think? It's really good though. The first thing that I got was like a sweet, right? What? It is, the distinctive is all about that. Truff? The truff, yeah. It just gives it that edge. It definitely makes a difference. It starts with sweet, then you get a hit of savory, in my opinion. And you get a little bit of crispy. Oh, and I did put my oven on broil for the last like two minutes, just so that it would really crisp up the top. That's what we wanted. What I would say is if you don't like spicy, use whatever kind of hot sauce you're comfortable with. If you like really spicy, go with a really spicy hot sauce. If you don't, then go with a lighter hot sauce. You like I, I totally agree. I like it. I would also add that um, if you really want to make it a treat, make thighs. Oh, for sure. Because your husbands don't like chicken breasts. It is what it is. Our 20 minute dinner coming at you. This is really, really easy. And it doesn't require a lot of ingredients, but it looks so beautiful when it's done. So I went ahead and took two pretty large chicken breasts. I cut them in half this way, like you guys know I like to do. That's gonna help them cook up faster too. So that's a little trick to keep this under that 20 minute mark. Now you can absolutely use salt and pepper if you want to. I'm gonna be using our Auntie Nono's Everything Seasoning. So we're just going to put a little bit of this on here. I like to add a little bit of oregano to this as well. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it because I'm gonna season the other side of these as well. That's it as far as this part goes. We're gonna take this over to the stove and get that heating up. Okay, this oil is nice and hot. I got a little distracted. It might be a little too hot, so I just turned that uh, temp down just a little bit. Okay, let's get these pieces of chicken in there and get a good sear on them. Because we sliced them really thin, they're only taking about three to four minutes each side. We just wanna make sure we get good color. So you see that beautiful color on there. So I, I check them and then flip them once I see that color. I have this fresh sliced mozzarella cheese. It's already pre-sliced, which is really convenient. 
We're gonna take some of this and lay it on top of the chicken. The chicken is fully cooked through now. On top of that, we're gonna put some tomato. Okay, I'm gonna put a lid on just for a minute or just set a lid on just so that cheese can melt. It's literally just for one minute. I have some basil here that I just cut up. One, and then because this is a 20 minute meal and I was saving time, I actually bought a balsamic reduction rather than making it. Now we're just gonna take that reduction and it just goes all over the top. Another thing that you can do is you can marinate your chicken in balsamic vinegar overnight and that's delicious as well. We're serving from the table tonight, so I'm just gonna take a little bite of one of these. That way I can taste it for you guys. I love these flavors. I love caprese anyway, but that chicken has a really nice flavor on it because we sauteed it, and that's really important. If you wanna get good flavor on your chicken, saute it first, even if you cook it another way after. Unless you're grilling it, that's a whole separate situation. But with that seasoning on it, and then you get that little bit of cheese and tomato, the balsamic vinegar, it's so good. It's very, very good. If you like caprese salad, you're gonna love this chick, guys. We are going to make a jalapeno popper casserole, but I'm going to cut these ingredients down a bit because we just don't need the full size of this recipe. So this makes a nine by 13 pan. We're not gonna be making a nine by 13. It's sort of a little bit half. Okay, so I'm starting with about one third of a block of cream cheese. So like maybe two and a half ounces-ish. So we're just gonna set this to the side just so that it can come to about room temperature. And I've got some already cooked chicken. Okay, so I'm gonna be using all of the rest of this chicken that we have. And I'm just gonna just barely cut it up into pieces. Spray our pan or grease your pan. Now I'm gonna put my chicken in here. We're gonna end up mixing all the ingredients together, but this is just to kind of keep it separate. We're getting lots of good chicken. It's gonna be very uh, protein, lots of protein in this one. Protein heavy. So now we're gonna cut up the jalapenos and um, I'm gonna be careful to de-seed these because I wanna make sure, my husband and I will eat jalapenos, no issue. The kids, they may think it's a little too spicy if I don't pull those seeds out. And this is one of those recipes where maybe you don't really like spice. Um, you could make this add very little jalapenos. Use as much or as little as you want. So don't go overboard if you're not crazy into spice. We're gonna save this one because I think that's gonna be a bit much if I add all of that. I'm also gonna chop up some green onion and I'm gonna use both parts. Totally up to you what you wanna use. You can omit this. You guys know you can, you can do this however you would like. We are gonna add one green onion sprig to the cream cheese and about one of the jalapenos to the cream cheese. And again, just set that to the side. And then I'm going to cut some more and the rest will be for garnish. Okay, I'm gonna step over to the stove. My water is boiling and I'm gonna put in some penne pasta. You can use whatever kind of pasta you want. Another thing is if you don't wanna use pasta, you can use potatoes instead and it's gonna be incredibly delicious as well. All right, so I added about a cup and a half of uncooked pasta just to make sure we have a good amount. In with my cream cheese, I'm gonna put in some non-fat plain Greek yogurt, about a fourth cup, maybe a little more, and you can absolutely use sour cream. You guys know we just use Greek yogurt in place of sour cream just for that added protein, totally up to you how you wanna do it. Now we're also going to put in some cheese. You use your favorite kind of cheese. This time my mom actually left this here, so I'm just gonna to toss it in. It is just Colby cheese, about a fourth cup. All right, let's try and incorporate this all together. We have the pasta done, and that is a hot pot. I'm gonna mix in the pasta with the chicken. Now we're going to spoon over this mixture, which you really could have just mixed it all together, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna do somewhat of a mix here just in the pan or casserole dish, that's what it's called. All right, I am adding a little bit of salt to this. I just quickly tasted it and I do feel like it needs a little bit. There was no salt in the recipe, which was a little surprising. Okay, I feel like it's mixed pretty well. One thing I do like to do 
because I feel like this, it'll burn, you know, up here on the sides, you'll get like that burn look and taste, obviously. I like to just clean it up just a little bit. I feel like it helps with that. We're gonna take just a little bit more cheese for the top, but you know, just to add that, that nicey cheese layer, nicey cheese, nice cheesy layer to the top. And now we're gonna take the rest of the jalapenos and the green onions and add that to the top as well. I didn't add the bacon. Well, I already added the cheese to the top, so now we're just gonna, oh my goodness. I'm losing it. I knew it was missing something. I knew it. Ugh. Oh well, it's gonna have to just kinda like, kinda get mixed in, cause now it's not gonna have that nice cheesy layer on the top. There's just gonna be bacon on the top. I bet it, that's where the salt comes in, y'all. <laughs> Why, why, why do y'all even watch my channel anymore? It's, it's gotta be for the humor. That's really what it's for. Okay, so do, um, do not do like me. Mix the bacon into the recipe and save a little bit for garnish. This is going into our oven. It's preheated at 350 degrees. Mine is only gonna bake for about 10 to 12 minutes, but that's because everything in it is already cooked. Okay, here is our pasta looks delicious. All right, let's give it a try. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything, a little bit of bacon, a little bit of jalapeno, a little bit of pasta. It literally just came out of the oven. That is tasty. It's not spicy at all. Absolutely, I could have added more jalapeno and it would have been completely fine. Like my kids can absolutely eat this. It is not spicy at all. So if you want spice, if you want heat, add more of those jalapenos or don't take the seeds out. This is good. Really, really good. It is really, really good. My husband just keeps saying how good it is. I am very excited about tonight's dinner. We are making a baked Tuscan chicken casserole. Anytime a recipe says Tuscan, I am here for it. I am going to try it. I just took this cream cheese out of the refrigerator so it's still not softened. I need to get about three ounces, three ounces of the cream cheese. I'm gonna soften it here in this bowl. I have to preheat my oven. We need to preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Okay, you can use frozen spinach if you want. You just need to squeeze out all the excess water. So you want it to be thawed and dry. I am actually using fresh spinach because we have it available. So that's pretty much what I go for anytime I make a recipe like this. I need a decent sized bunch because it is going to wilt a lot. So you want, you want a good amount. I'm gonna chop it up as kind of as small as possible here probably should be using a larger knife for this, but you know. Now, obviously, if you use frozen, you're gonna have, it's gonna look like a lot less than this. So let's go ahead and add it in to the cream cheese. Just start combining the ingredients as we add them in. Okay, we do wanna add about three ounces of heavy cream. The entire container that I have here is 16 ounces. I have a scale, so I'm just gonna lay this on the scale and weigh out three ounces. Um, but you can just kind of estimate if you want. You guys are probably all shocked that I'm actually measuring. It's probably just under a cup. Okay, let's stir that together. We need to add some minced garlic. The recipe actually calls for four cloves, which, you know, that makes me excited because I actually prefer a lot of garlic. I've got my teaspoon measurer and I'm gonna add probably three teaspoons or so, but if you feel like that's a lot, that's totally okay, just cut it down. We do need to add about a half teaspoon of salt. Now, some of the cheeses that we're gonna be adding to this is gonna give it a little bit of a salty flavor. Parmesan, to me, has kind of a salty flavor. So, you don't have to add too much salt because of that. Okay, we are going to add some onion powder. Let's add about a half teaspoon. You can measure this. I'm just going by amounts that I know that we like. I've got some chili powder here. We're gonna add roughly a fourth teaspoon of chili powder. You can add more, again. All these flavors smell really good. We've got some Italian seasoning. We're going for about a teaspoon on this one. This is one of those ones where we really enjoy it, so we might add a little more. Now, you can absolutely do this, and like you can beat it all together if that's what you want. I just didn't feel like it was necessary. It's combining really well. It just didn't really need my uh, hand mixer or anything like that. Okay, I am going to add some cheese into this mixture. So I've got some mozzarella, 
and I'm gonna add about half of it. You're gonna need a total of about three fourths of a cup or a cup, whatever you prefer. And I'm also gonna add some of this Asiago blend that we have because why not? Not too much, just a little bit because we are gonna top this with a little bit more cheese. I just wanna have it mixed in together as well. Okay, now I'm gonna be using a small dish, a small square dish. I don't think we need the nine by 13 baking dish, but I do wanna spray this really well, especially since there's cheeses in this. I cut my chicken breast through the center like this, and we all pretty much always do that. For some reason, we just prefer it. We think that it's better that way. I don't know, it's a family preference, so that's what I usually do. We do want to season the chicken breast just a bit, so I'm gonna add some salt and pepper, and again, if, you are, if you're new here, this is something I say quite a bit, always season from up high, then you don't get the clumps, so you're kind of, it's spreading it out more evenly. I'm also going to add a little bit of pepper, and I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder and a touch of garlic powder to the chicken. You can also absolutely flip this and add seasoning to the other side. Okay, let's take this mixture and we are gonna spread this all over the top of the chicken. And the oven is ready, which is perfect timing because we are almost ready to put this in there. Spread it as evenly as possible. We want to make sure each one of these pieces of chicken get this good sauce on the top, y'all. This one is just so good. Like, so if you haven't tried this before, it's so good. I have some sun-dried tomatoes here in a bag. You absolutely can buy the ones in the jar that have the oil in them. I'm just gonna use these. It's so perfect, I don't even have to cut them. And this is kind of a preference, like however much you enjoy, we're gonna make sure there's a decent amount of sun-dried tomatoes. Plus it looks so pretty when it comes out of the oven and you see that red kind of pop through the cheese. Trust me on this one. It's, it is one of the prettiest dishes, in my opinion, when you pull this out of the oven. If you used the sun-dried tomatoes that are in the jar that have the oil in them, take a tablespoon of the oil and drizzle it over the top. If you don't, if you use the ones that I did, just take about a tablespoon of olive oil or your favorite cooking oil and just sprinkle that over the top. Okay, the last thing we wanna do is top this with a little bit more cheese. So we reserved some of our cheese for just this. I'm gonna grab some foil. We do wanna loosely cover this with foil for the first 20 minutes in the oven. Once that 20 minutes is done with the foil on, we're gonna pull it off and bake for an additional 15 minutes or so with the foil off. Look how delicious this chicken looks. We already know we love this because we actually have had this before. Guys, the flavors of this are phenomenal. You have to make this, you have to. It's so good. You guys already know how much we love quiche, but this quiche is a little bit different. It's so unique looking, so pretty. We are gonna change up the recipe just a little bit because I think that I can make it a little bit better and tweak some things, but stay tuned, this looks so good. I'm starting off by doing this something a little bit different than the recipe calls for, just because I read through the comments and it seems as if you've just placed the bacon on top of this quiche, it doesn't get all the way done. So we are going to make this lattice structure before and just cook it on some parchment paper, but not all the way through, then place it on the pie dish when we're ready to bake it. So I'm just gonna put this in the oven and I don't know, let's say like 15 minutes or so on 400 and we're gonna see how far it bakes at that point. Okay friends, I have a pie crust recipe that I really love. So I made mine. Feel free to buy your pie crust if that's something that you prefer. We make a sourdough version and it's just really good. Now this has been in the fridge, so we'll see how easy it is to roll out. Also, one of you asked about this little roller, rolling pin in the last video that I used it in. And it's kind of a um, seasonal target thing. So I'll have it linked in the description box if you're curious. It's definitely, well, when I checked a couple weeks ago or last week, it was available when I checked. But like I said, it's kind of a Christmas thing and it's only a couple bucks. It's, this is the only rolling pin that I have. <laughs> now, obviously, if you are using the store-bought pie crust, this part is gonna be a lot easier. It's not perfect, but we aren't picky. It will do. 
I'm gonna let this bake for just a couple of minutes in the oven. My oven is lowering to 375 right, right now, but I'm gonna let this bake for just a couple of minutes before we end up baking it again with all the toppings in it. Also, if you, if you go watch that other video, I have a tip for the extra little pie crust stuff. It's best to poke a few little holes so you've got some venting. Still might get some bubbles. If you have pie weights or dried beans, you can use those. I'm going to put this in the oven, let's say 10 minutes. Most quiches call for around four eggs. I usually prefer in between five and six eggs. I prefer them to have um, less milk than most call for, or like less heavy cream and more eggs. So I pretty much always adjust recipes. Feel free to do it however you want, but I think that we will do, oh, little shell. Always use your extra shell because it's the best at getting the shell. Now the recipe that I have been using for this requires two cups of milk, but like I said, I always cut that down. And I'm actually gonna use some milk and some heavy cream because I do have another milk I could open, but I always feel like a heavy cream just gives it a little bit more richness. So we're gonna add some of that and then I will need to open the other milk. If I had another heavy cream, I would fill it up all the way. If you have fresh parsley, I definitely suggest using that, but mine just really didn't look good. So we're gonna add in some uh, dried parsley and I'm going with around a tablespoon. If you're using fresh parsley, you wanna go with about two tablespoons. We definitely want to add salt. I'm adding a teaspoon of salt. You can add pepper. I actually don't have any of that right now, so we are skipping that. And let's just start to whisk all of this together. Add whatever flavors you love. I mean, that's, that is such a great thing about quiche. There's this quiche that we love that I probably make once a month and it makes two of them, so we end up freezing one. And it is eggs and rotel and cream cheese, y'all. It is so delicious. We love that one. You can buy frozen potatoes if you like. I actually had some potatoes that I went and shredded. So I wanted to just go ahead and use those. But you would want to use one of the uh, 16 ounce bags of shredded potatoes. I need to make sure it's all gonna fit in my little um, quiche pan. Potatoes don't have a lot of flavor, obviously, so you may want to add, I think I am gonna add a little bit more salt. Some of you may think that that's excessive and that's totally okay. Um, you can skip that, but I think another half teaspoon of salt would be good just because of the potatoes. And we need to add in cheese, obviously. You can skip that if you don't like cheese or are dairy-free, but I mean, if you're dairy-free, you're probably not making a quiche, let's be real. So you need about eight ounces of cheese. I'm gonna go with maybe a cup and a half or so. And this is the Kerrygold cheese. You guys know we shredded ourselves. Well, you guys ask for my cheese grater all the time. I have the link in my description box if you um, are curious. You can always check there. This was in the oven for 10 minutes. I think that's the perfect amount. Now we need to take our mixture here. I'm, I don't even know if all of it's gonna fit in there to be honest, but. Let's do, we're just gonna do our best, okay? Oops, I'm making a mess, but that's not surprising. Okay, you guys know I did use extra eggs than what the recipe called for. I also have a bigger quiche dish that I chose not to use. So um, you could also do that. Let's just pour a little bit more, a little bit more. Let me show you how good this bacon lattice turned out. I'm really excited. So one of the comments on the blog was that the middle did not get done for people that tried it. So that's why I thought, let me just go ahead and try and make it up first. Then it's still gonna continue to cook. The edges might get a little bit, bit done. This is experimental, but I love the idea of this. How neat is this gonna look on top of the quiche? But we are going to take our lattice and just set it on the top here. Now, obviously, if you are not making it ahead, you're gonna have overlap. Your pieces of bacon will not have shrunken down like mine did. I'm actually gonna press it in a little bit because I thought it looked really pretty kind of baked into it, but you would just form it around the edge. So mine's gonna look a little different than the person that I got the recipe from, but I think it's a really neat concept. Oh shoot, I can't cover it. 
I was gonna cover this first with aluminum foil, but I can't because we are out of aluminum foil. We are going to put this in the oven and see how it goes. How about that? Okay, this is gonna go in for around 40 minutes and I will check it then. Okay, I am not going to taste test this yet because it's actually for tomorrow morning, but how cute is this? How good does it look? I love this one. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. When you slice it, you see, um, you see the bacon on the top and you see the potatoes in the middle. You guys, we got so excited about this one. <laughs> I completely forgot to taste test it. And I actually made it before I went out of town. My husband called me while I was out of town and was like, that was the best quiche you've ever made. It was so good. When I came home, there was two pieces left. So we, be, we each got to have one and I completely forgot to taste test it for you. But it was delicious. This one is happening again. And we are going to make a barbecue chicken one pot meal with rice and beans and it's, it's so good. I'm telling you, it's so good. All right, let's put some olive oil here in our pan, get that nice and hot. We are going to add chicken thighs to this skillet. We're just gonna sear off four at a time. Let me wash my hands so we can season these. For seasoning, I'm gonna be using this Auntie Nono Steakhouse blend. Now, as these are cooking, I am going to take some barbecue sauce that I made up. You do not have to make barbecue sauce. You can just uh, use whatever kind your favorite kind is. And I'm just going to take a pastry brush and just brush each one of them. We're gonna sear both sides, so let's take a look and see how we are. We're just doing a couple minutes each side because this is gonna get cooked in a few minutes additionally, so. I just, we're getting like a pre-sear going on here. Needs a little bit longer. And some more barbecue sauce. All right, these have a bit of a sear, so let's transfer them to a plate and start the second batch. Two of these pieces are actually gonna be for a different recipe, but we're taking all of them out, and I'm gonna add in some garlic into my pan. It's obviously still hot, but I did turn down the heat a little bit just so that we don't stand here and burn this uh, barbecue sauce. I'm gonna add in about two cloves of minced garlic, and we'll just saute that for just a minute. We actually want these bits that you see down here. That's gonna add so much flavor. I have a can of black beans that I've already drained and rinsed. We're gonna add these in and just kind of mix together and toast this for a minute. You can also add onion to this, obviously. This is the part where when you add the garlic, that's where you'd wanna also add the onions. And I've also seen corn add, added to this recipe. We like corn, we just don't like it mixed into things. I have three fourths of a cup of rice. We're gonna add this in and kind of toast the rice. Too many kitchen tools here. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, that's the sound you wanna hear when your rice is toasting. I'm gonna let this toast just for a couple of minutes. It's gonna add awesome flavor. I'm gonna be using bone broth. You can use uh, chicken broth or chicken stock if that's what you prefer. Three cups of this bone broth. And several of you have asked, you know, why I use bone broth instead of chicken broth or chicken stock. And that's because we just like to add extra protein where we're able to. And honestly, usually I make my own bone broth, but I have not made a whole chicken in a while and I need to because we have some chickens out in our freezer that need to get, um, that I need to use up. I am gonna add a little bit of the barbecue sauce in here. I do need to reserve some for a different recipe that I am making. But overall, this recipe is getting about a cup of barbecue sauce. So I just need a little bit. Mix all that together, and we want this right here to come to a boil. So I'm gonna turn up my heat so we get a boil. A low boil is starting to happen. And I made an error. I did not check to see if this pot had a lid. So we're gonna have to transfer pots. 
so that I have a lid. This should be interesting. I'm gonna turn the camera off for this one. Okay, that actually wasn't near as bad as what I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so now since this is a cold pan, we're probably gonna have to get back up to a boil here. We are at a boil, so let's put in the chicken. I'm going to kinda nestle it into the rice. So we've got six pieces in there. I'm gonna turn down the heat. We want to go for like a medium low so that it simmers. And we're gonna put a lid on this. This is gonna cook for about 30 minutes until that rice is done. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. Check this out. Okay, it's looking pretty good. The only thing I'll say is there's like more liquid on one side, but that's okay. We're going to add some cheese. This is our favorite Kerrygold cheese. You do not have to do this. You can skip this if you want to, but we are gonna add a layer of cheese to the top. And I'm gonna put the lid on just for a couple more minutes and let that cheese melt. Let's add some parsley to the top. This is just for color, so you don't have to worry about doing this if that's not something that you have on hand, but I do feel like it makes it so pretty. And even though this is more of a barbecue dish and not a Mexican dish, we're gonna add some tomatoes and some avocado because it just sounds really good. All right, y'all know this looks so delicious. Look at all these colors. Homemade barbecue sauce, chicken thighs, rice. This is the dream meal. You guys, I completely forgot to do a taste test on this one, but it was delicious. I do want to tell you that I don't think you need to use three cups of liquid. I would only use two cups of liquid. I do feel like we had to reduce it so much that the rice got a little more done than I would prefer. So take that same recipe, but cut the liquid down and it is going to be perfect because the flavor of this is phenomenal. So this one sounds really, really easy. I don't even know what we wanna call this. It sounds delicious though, okay? So we are going to take some of this cream cheese. So I've got a half of a block left. Okay, so we're just gonna put that here in the center. I am gonna spread it just a little bit. All right, and I just made up a super quick chili. She said that she uses, pour a can of chili over it. Now, I already had all the stuff. A lot of the ingredients were being used in dinner tonight, so I went ahead and just made up a super little quick chili here. We're gonna throw this over the top. It already smells delicious. Okay, now I definitely think that a no bean chili, you guys know, this is, this is a debate on my channel whenever I make chili. I actually love beans in our chili. I know that's not Texas chili, but I do think that for this recipe, it's better to have no beans, but that's just, you listen, you make any recipe however you wanna make it. You know that is a motto here on my channel. I'm just gonna use all of it, even though that's kind of a lot of chili, I think it'll be okay. Okay, she said she tops this with cheese and then she bakes it in the oven. I don't know how long or what temperature. I'm gonna go 350 and we're just gonna bake it until the cheese is nice and melty. Now she uses a cheddar cheese. I'm actually using a pepper jack because I already had it shredded. You can use whatever you wanna use, you guys know that. As soon as my oven is preheated, this is gonna go into my preheated oven and we'll, we'll start at like 10 minutes and see how it looks. But I think if it, as long as it doesn't spread too much, chips around the edge here could actually be really pretty. Okay, so this one is, it's cream cheese, chili, and cheese. And she said it's best served with Fritos. We don't have any Fritos, obviously, right oh, now. Oh, yeah, so we're doing, would be, yeah. It would be perfect. Yeah, yeah, what's in the chili? Just my normal chili, except no beans. I did no bean chili yeah, for that's this smart. purpose. You could put a glob of sour cream on the top. That is so good. That's the money appetizer right there. It doesn't need the sour cream. Now, now that you've tried it, you still feel yeah, like it needs no, the sour agreed. cream. Agreed. That's really good. That is really good. This is delicious. The, all these flavors work together, yeah, together perfectly. If you had the big Fritos, the scoops, that would be ideal. This is delicious. 
It's very good. Here we're gonna do a sheet pan dinner. This one is a little bit fall inspired. So the flavors are a little different from maybe other sheet pans that you've seen, but they're all really good and they're working together really well. Now the recipe here calls for chicken breasts. We're using chicken thighs. It's just a preference here. Use whichever ones you prefer. You could even go with drumsticks or something else if that's what you wanna do. Technically, you don't have to marinate your chicken, but I do feel like this is a Saturday. I have the time, I might as well marinate it. So let's make up a good marinade for this. In this little bowl here, I'm gonna combine about three tablespoons of olive oil, and we wanna add a good amount of garlic, because remember, this is a marinade. There want, you want lots of good garlic. So I'm adding in at least three teaspoons of garlic. I might even go back at the end and add in a little bit more. And we are going to add some cinnamon. Now I, I like cinnamon, but I'm not a huge cinnamon fan. So the recipe calls for a teaspoon, but I think I'm gonna go a little less, like maybe a half teaspoon. And then toss in some salt and pepper combine all of this together, and this is going to go all over the chicken, and I'm gonna let this marinate in the fridge for about two hours or so. That's a good marinating time. If you have the ability to marinate it, go ahead and do that, but don't fret. If you don't have the time to marinate, that's okay too. If you don't have the time to marinate, just put this on your chicken right before you put it into the oven. I'm cutting up a sweet potato. I actually was gonna do two, but I'm just gonna stick with one for this recipe. So I'm just cubing it up into bite-sized pieces. Definitely peeling it first. You can leave the peel on if that's something that you prefer. We just prefer ours peeled. And then I'm gonna be taking about three apples. The recipe only calls for two, but since this sweet potato is not as large as I would like it to be, I'm gonna go for three apples. I'm cubing this the same size as the sweet potato. I am not peeling the apple though. It's totally preference. You do however you wanna do this. And then I think this would be really good with Brussels sprouts, but I used the Brussels sprouts that I ordered in a different recipe. So I have some green beans. I have about a half a bag of those. So we're gonna add the green beans in instead and just have it with green beans tonight. Let's take these ingredients, toss them together in a bowl. I'm gonna add some olive oil and some salt and pepper. Use whatever flavors you love, whatever spices, herbs, all that kind of stuff, whatever you love. Toss that together and get them all nicely coated and we'll get this ready to roast. All right, friends, we've got our parchment lined baking sheet here. Let's take our vegetables and go ahead and line the whole thing. And I'm just gonna kind of shake it around so that they spread out evenly. My oven is currently preheating to 425 degrees. These are gonna go in and roast for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna add the chicken on top of it and continue cooking. This part has been in the oven for about 15 minutes or so. I am gonna toss these before we add the chicken. You can put your chicken directly on top, but I just created a little area to put it in here. This has actually been marinating for about four hours now, so it should be good. All right, you guys, this is gonna go back into the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes until the chicken is fully cooked through. All right, we got lots of fall colors here. Looks really pretty. Let's give it a taste. All right, I'm gonna try the chicken because that marinade was really interesting to me. I like it. I like that. The cinnamon actually adds a really cool element of flavor. All right, let's try the other stuff. You've got the sweetness from the apples and the sweet potato. I feel like with the savory chicken, if you take a bite with the apple and the sweet potato and you have that sweetness too, this is good, guys. I like this one. So we want to, your head's being cut off this whole time. <laughs> I know. Oh my goodness. It's not gonna focus. Oh, it is. Watch you this. always try that. Watch this. It's not gonna happen. Steady goes the hand. <laughs> like a samurai. It's like the least steady hand ever. <laughs> Our verse today comes from Galatians 5.13. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh 
but through love, serve one another. If you need more inspiration, definitely check out the video above and you are going to get tons more.